In this masterclass, we will be examining the EUS-centered management of necrotizing pancreatitis in the context of disconnected pancreatic duct syndrome. Let's begin this masterclass with a case presentation. A 42-year-old patient was referred for gastric outlet obstruction and abdominal pain. 18 months ago, he was admitted to an outside facility with necrotizing pancreatitis that required a three-month ICU stay and seven sessions of endoscopic drainage together with necrosectomy. At EUS, the patient had two medium-sized fluid collections in the pancreatic body and tail compressing the gastric antrum. It was obvious from EUS that the patient had a viable pancreatic head and non region. However, the body and tail of the pancreas terminated into the collection around the genu, suggestive of disconnected pancreatic duct syndrome, also known as DPDS. In DPDS, which is seen in around 50% of patients with necrotizing pancreatitis, there is a complete transection of the pancreatic duct, resulting in viable portion of the upstream pancreatic parenchyma becoming disconnected from the main pancreatic duct downstream. With no path for drainage of pancreatic juice, patients develop recurrent fluid collections that can become symptomatic as seen in our patient. Both fluid collections were drained using lumen posing metal stents, and at three-week outpatient follow-up, the lumen posing metal stent in the most proximal collection was replaced with double pigtail plastic stents. The objective here is to keep the transmural tract patents so that the disconnected gland can drain via the fistula into the stomach, thereby minimizing the possibility of fluid collection recurrence. In a prior study, we have shown that patients with indwelling transmural stents have significantly lower rates of BFC recurrence than patients in whom the stents are removed. Therefore, when patients present with acute necrotizing pancreatitis, the goals must be twofold. One, to manage the acute event in a masterly fashion, applying evidence-based methods. And two, minimize the possibility of disease recurrence. At presentation, it is important to look for early evidence of DPDS as it has implications for endoscopic treatment. The presence of an intervening necrotic area of at least 2 cm with viable pancreatic tissue upstream and the duct in the pancreatic tail segment making an angle of 90 degrees within the collection are features strongly suggestive of DPDS. Also, we have shown that DPDS can be diagnosed by EOS by the presence of a well-defined fluid collection along the course of the main pancreatic duct, with the upstream pancreatic parenchyma and the duct terminating into the fluid collection. The significance of DPDS is that the clinical course is more aggressive than that of patients with an intact pancreatic duct. These patients may require rescue surgery, need more re-interventions to achieve treatment success, endure prolonged hospital length of stay and have higher rates of PFC recurrence. Now with this background information, let's examine how a patient with necrotizing pancreatitis should be treated. This 52-year-old patient with infected necrotizing pancreatitis and suspected DPDS underwent placement of a 20mm diameter lumen pacing metal stent under EUS guidance. The patient was ASA class 3, SERS positive, and the degree of solid necrosis was greater than 50% within the collection. Given recent evidence from the Destin trial that showed that performing necrosectomy at index treatment session decreased the number of reinterventions to achieve treatment success and yields more rapid clinical improvement, an endoscopic necrosectomy was performed. After two additional necrosectomy sessions, the patient was discharged home. At three-week follow-up, ERCP confirmed the presence of DPDS. Also note at EUS, the patient had a viable pancreatic parenchyma distal to the lumen posing metal stent, as shown on AI. Please note that DPDS can also be confirmed by high-quality MRCP rather than ERCP. Due to the presence of DPDS, the LAMS was then replaced with double pigtail plastic stent to maintain the patency of the transmural tract and to minimize PFC recurrence. A potential disadvantage of this approach is that the cavity can occasionally collapse, completely precluding exchange of LAMS for plastic stents. 
Therefore, to avoid this possibility, it is important to perform the exchange of endoprosthesis in a timely fashion. Alternatively, the index procedure can be undertaken with placement of plastic stents in lieu of lambs. The disadvantage of such an approach is that the duration for index procedure will likely be longer. The initial clinical improvement slightly delayed due to slower drainage, and the transmural tract will likely need dilation at each necrosectomy session. The potential advantages include the lower procedural costs and the presence of an indwelling plastic stent at all times that precludes the complete collapse of the cavity. If a thoughtful approach is not undertaken at index intervention, then DPDS can manifest later as pain, pancreatitis, or recurrent fluid collection. While distal pancreatectomy is the definitive treatment, most patients are poor surgical candidates. In patients with pain and dilated main pancreatic duct, an EOS-guided pancreatogastrostomy can be undertaken. EOS examination revealed a dilated pancreatic duct measuring 8 mm in the region of the neck of the pancreas. For EOS-guided pancreatic duct drainage, the pancreatic duct in the neck of the pancreas was punctured using a 19-gauge FNA needle. Contrast was then injected to obtain a pancreatogram, which confirmed the dilated pancreatic duct. A 0.025-inch guide wire was then inserted through the needle and into the pancreatic duct. The needle was removed, leaving the guide wire in place. This was followed by tract dilation using a cystotome, then a 4mm hurricane dilating balloon. Finally, a 5 French 12cm pancreatic stent with an internal flange and 3 quarter pigtail was inserted from the gastric lumen and into the main pancreatic duct. In patients with small residual collections, after installation of water into the free space that communicates with the main pancreatic duct, an EOS-guided transgastric stent placement can be undertaken. However, all of these options can be technically challenging to perform. In this patient with a small 2.5 cm sized residual collection, the small collection was punctured using a 19-gauge FNA needle, and water was instilled into this area to expand the collection. An angled 0.025 inch guide wire was then inserted through the needle and into the collection. The tract was dilated. And a double pigtail plastic stent was inserted into the collection. However, all these salvage procedures can be avoided if patients with necrotizing pancreatitis and DPDS are managed thoughtfully at the index intervention. These are the final take-home points from this masterclass. 1. Always seek the presence of DPDS prior to undertaking an index intervention. 2. Presence of DPDS signifies a difficult clinical course. 3. Treat these patients preferably with a 20mm lambs to facilitate better and rapid drainage of necrotic contents. 4. In well-encapsulated collections, consider necrosectomy at index treatment as it reduces reinterventions and shortens hospital length of stay. 5. At follow-up, always ascertain the presence of DPDS. To minimise recurrence, exchange the lambs for double pigtail plastic stents. Finally, always remember that treatment of PFCs is a two-step approach. Minimising recurrence is as important as achieving success at initial presentation. Thank you for watching this Florida Live Masterclass. To observe and learn in real time complex biliary and pancreatic interventions, please register and attend the premier global event, Florida Live Endoscopy, from August 22nd to 24th, 2024, in Orlando, Florida, where the magic of endoscopy begins. If you want to learn evidence-based practices and know more about state-of-the-art endoscopy technologies, please attend Florida Live Endoscopy from August 22nd to 24th, 2024, in Orlando, Florida, where advanced interventions will be performed by internationally reputed faculty from around the world. Please join us at Florida Live, where the magic of endoscopy begins.